Yo, it is so sad because you can literally have all the money in the world and everything you ever wanted. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a hot topic. Modern women are furious men don't approach them and it's hitting them where it hurts. We'll explore why this shift is happening, the reactions from women, and the broader implications for dating and relationships. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss our latest videos. Let's jump right in and break it all down. I feel really sad for single women in 2024, and that's coming from a single woman, so I feel sorry for myself as well. So if you don't know, I feel like a broken record, but I'm 30, and me and my friend have started going to this young adults thing on Tuesday nights um, at a church, and it's been great. I love the environment. So many, so many girls that I've met there who are very similar to me, just like such sweet souls, so beautiful inside and out, and a lot of them are also single. Now, am I saying that I'm going to this church solely to find a husband? No, but obviously like that is a big part of why a lot of people go to churches and socialize in these settings. Like, in my opinion, I can have a relationship with God wherever I am, like, I don't have to be in a building to do that. But if I want to meet a husband, that's that's probably where I'm going to go to, to find somebody who has similar beliefs to me. But I just, I found myself getting kind of sad, not necessarily for me, but just like our generation, because I was looking around at all these women there who are just, you know, they take the time to look good. They're wearing their cute sundresses. They're wearing their accessories. They have like their makeup. They look so good. And they're also such well-rounded people, have so much going on in their lives, such interesting people. And like none of us can find anybody you know for myself i think i've always had a very strong like i've gone through my ups and downs like body image issues various issues but i've always had a very strong sense of self and i feel like now in my life you know i waver in how dedicated i am to reading my bible on a daily basis but i have a very strong sense that god is always with me and i'm always talking to him about things and i just feel like i i, I very much know that's where my worth comes from now and I'm, I'm very i'm very at peace with where i'm at i've been single for a long time and i've I've truly made peace that if, if there's no one out there for me and that and God wants me to be alone and just have rely on him, like I've made peace with that. But it is really sad to me to watch so many women in this stage of life where we're all just hoping and praying for somebody because obviously we're not all living our lives just to find a husband. We're living our lives, you know, to live our lives and do what God wants us to do and whatever you whatever you believe. But it's always gonna be in the back of our minds that we're always hoping for the Prince Charming to come. We're always hoping for the right person. And it is just so hard now. And I, and I I can't put my finger on why it is. Um, I, I've been pretty lucky in my dating journey. I've really never dated anybody seriously, but everyone I have dated has always been very respectful. I've never dated anybody that was t particularly problematic. I, I think I just don't really invite that into my life, but I've never met anybody who really like, there were any like sparks. And I've realized in the last few years with building this community and social media and just meeting other girls who are like me where that is that is not unusual. It's it's very hard to find someone that you really connect with these days. Do not know why, but, and I really don't know why I'm posting this. I'm just posting this more so to just say, like if you're a girl in the situation, I, I really do feel your pain and I feel for you. I think for me as well, the reality has kind of set in as I'm, and a lot of you guys know, you've been following my vlogs, that I'm moving out of my parents' house for the first time, a lot older than a lot of people do. And I think this is really highlighted for me, like Lydia, you're actually gonna be alone in a space by yourself, no one there, no one to talk to, you don't have a boyfriend, nothing even close, you don't really have that many friends either. You're gonna be on your own. And it's really forcing me to have to confront the fact that like, God is the only one that I have and I really have to rely on him for everything. I mean, obviously I have my family, they're like 15 minutes away, but you know what I mean? Like in your own space, you're very, very much confronted with like your true feelings about things. And I think for a lot of years, I've been very distracted with things. Like I don't really date very often because I'm not, I don't know, I've just been very distracted with other things. But I think as I'm starting to spend more time in that apartment by myself, I'm starting to realize like I really do desire a husband and I don't know if that's ever going to happen. So as much as I have I have made peace with that, I'm very happy with the stage of life that I'm in. I do trust God that he is going to bring what's meant for me into my life. It is hard, it's really hard. And I just wanted to say that in case you're in the same situation, life is not easy out here. It's not easy to feel safe as a woman by yourself. It's also just like not easy when what you want is to have a husband and you don't have that and it's hard to find, And you, but you also just don't wanna date people who you know are not the right person. It's hard, but you know what? I have learned through being at this church and meeting all these people that a strong community of girls 
is so important. I think it makes you feel so much less alone to be around people who understand you are in the same stage of life and you can confide in, cry with. Because <laughs> let's be honest, at the moment, I've only got my coworkers to cry with as friends and I cannot cry to all these men at work. I mean, I have and I and I probably still will, but I, I really should not. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to say that. This is also not exclusive to if you're a Christian or not. You know, any woman who is struggling being on their own and hasn't found the right person, whatever your criteria is, it is hard and I understand you and I see you and you know, join the club. <laughs> We're all here together. Here's the thing. Good men aren't in churches or bars. The fact is, many women have either missed their chances, set their expectations too high, or played stupid games. Now, they want to blame men for their misery. Let's get real. Men evolve and women stay where they are. Men are rising and women are falling back. Simple. Take a look at her video. She's either missed her chances, set unrealistic expectations, or played the wrong games. Now, she wants to make men feel like they're the cause of her unhappiness. This is classic behavior we've seen time and again. For years, some women have been playing games and shaming men, thinking they can then find good men in churches. Sorry to break it to you, but good men aren't in churches or bars. Good men have opted out of the game long ago, leaving only Chads and Tyrones in the system. Men have adapted to the changing dynamics of relationships. They've grown smarter, more cautious, and more self-aware. Meanwhile, some women are stuck in the same cycle, making the same mistakes, and expecting different results. They chase the bad boys and then act surprised when things don't work out. Now, these women are trying to pin their misery on men. They want to make it seem like men are the problem when, in reality, men have just stopped playing the game. They've had enough of the drama and the double standards. They've wised up and realized that the cost of being in a relationship with these women is greater than the benefits. This isn't about men not stepping up or not being good partners. It's about men recognizing the toxic behavior and choosing to protect their peace. They've decided that it's not worth the effort to engage with women who don't bring anything positive to their lives. These women need to understand that men are done with the BS. They're done with the games the high expectations, and the lack of accountability. Men are looking for real, genuine connections, and they're not going to find that with women who refuse to grow and evolve. So, ladies, if you want to find a good man, maybe it's time to look in the mirror and start making some changes. Men have evolved. It's time for you to do the same. If you are not being approached by the masculine when you're out, and you know you're a beautiful woman, a successful woman, you have a lot to offer, let's talk, because I know how frustrating that is. I made a video about this before where I shared that until I was 24, I had never been approached out at a bar or been hit on, like, ever. Like the first time a drink was bought for me, I turned to my sister and I was like, what do, what, what do I do? Ooh. And I didn't know why at the time because I thought physically like, okay, I like how I look. I know I have a lot to offer. Why isn't this working? I'm a driven, successful woman. What's going on? Why am I not being approached? Let me shed some light on this for you. By the way, there was even a study that came out to back part of this recently. When your energy is closed, people aren't going to approach you no matter how beautiful you are. Because as humans, we're always assessing what is the risk of me getting rejected. Especially speaking candidly, as the culture of feminism has really changed dating, a lot of men are kind of like, uh, do I approach? Do I let her approach me? What do I do? They're confused. The thing that will draw a person in to approach you, the masculine, or not have them approach you at all is how open or closed your energy is. And I've been saying this for the longest because especially driven women usually present more in their masculine and they're kind of like, oh, I have these walls and you have to break them down and I don't trust you and so I'm going to make you work for it sort of energy sometimes. What I've always worked with clients on is how to soften their body and open their energy up to allow that energy to come in. What this study found was exactly that in different words, just not in feminine and masculine energy work. The women who were approached the most in the study were the ones giving the most green lights that they were available for connection. Why? Because people are constantly assessing, am I going to be rejected or not? If somebody's giving you no eye contact, their body's closed, their energy's rigid, why would you approach them? You know you're going to be on the chopping block or you're going to be um, potentially rejected. When a woman softens, and I will do this in person with my clients when we do in-person days, We'll go out and I will teach them how to soften their body, how to keep their energy up and out in the room versus inward, how to stay open to somebody approaching them and give those green lights to potential people to come forward. And I only know this because this used to be my biggest struggle. 
I was such a relationship girl that I was always closed off. So I never had that experience. And when I was dating, I didn't know how to open my energy. I taught this to a friend of mine and showed her how to open energy and have the masculine come in and approach. And it happened so fast that the, this person came to our table and all the things we got in the car after and she was like, I'm hiring you for private coaching because that little tiny shift was crazy. I can't wait to see what else we can do together. Moral of the story, how open is your energy and are you giving them green lights to approach you? And if you want a more in-depth transformation so you can start to feel safe, relaxed, confident, open when you choose to in dating arenas, then fill out an application because let's talk about getting you in your most empowered feminine magnetic energy to help the empowered masculine partners. Fellas. It's no secret that the landscape has changed. In today's world, the risk of being falsely accused or ridiculed on social media has made approaching women feel like it's just not worth the effort and drama. Now, listen up, ladies. If you want men to approach you, you have to create an environment that signals you're open to it. Let's be real, most women only want attractive men to approach them, and this sends mixed messages to the rest of us. If you want men to take that step, you need to give us clear, positive signals. Show some green lights. Here's the thing. Body language is key. A smile, eye contact, or even just an open and approachable demeanor can make all the difference. Men are not mind readers, and in today's climate, we need to be sure that our approach will be welcomed and not met with hostility or ridicule. The reality is, men are tired of the drama and the potential backlash. We don't want to be labeled as creeps or have our reputations tarnished over a simple hello. So, it's on you ladies to make the first move by showing that you're open to being approached. Think about it. If you're constantly sending out signals that scream, stay away, or only giving attention to the top 1% of guys, then don't be surprised when the rest of us keep our distance. If you want to be approached, be approachable. It's that simple. So, to wrap it up. Men are hesitant to approach women because the risks often outweigh the rewards. But if you, ladies, want that to change, start by creating a welcoming environment. Give us some green lights, show us you're interested, and watch how things can change. So we all know in 2024, the dating scene kind of sucks. Couldn't agree more. And I'm sure you're going to enlighten us as to why. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that men no longer court women. Again, I 100% agree. And... There's a reason for that, and I'm willing to bet you're going to share with us what you think those reasons are. I'm also willing to bet that whatever you think the reasons are, aren't even remotely close to the actual reasons why. Men no longer pursue women the way they used to. Think about the notebook. Think about the way that Noah pursued Ali from the second he saw her. That literally doesn't happen anymore. Maybe like 5% of the time. Now I have to admit it's been a while since I made my way through that god-awful movie. But her referencing it proves once again that women live and breathe in fantasies. And because she loved what she saw in that movie, she's now decided that that's the way it's always been, at least up until now. Every man has pursued women in exactly the same way as what happened in that movie. Well, I hate to break it to you, darling, but that's not even remotely close to reality. So these are my theories as to why the dating scene is like that. First of all, I think that the music we've listened to growing up has really affected this. I think that rap music has had such a negative impact on men and on the dating scene because if you listen to rap music and you listen to the way that these guys refer to women, they basically just talk about them like they're objects for sex and they're really not useful for anything else. Like, like there's literally zero respect for women in these songs. Now, I actually think she's got a little bit of a point about music and rap music in particular influencing the mindset of today's men. I don't necessarily disagree agree with her but i also think it's highly influenced the mindset of today's women now i'm no fan of rap music and i don't listen to it it's not my thing any more than country music is but to blame everything on rap music mm, not so much but it is a fair point to say that there has been some influence and the little bit i do know about rap music is it can be very degrading towards women. but the other observation i've often made is that the biggest connoisseurs of that music the ones who follow it the most happen to be white suburban teenage girls. 
Just saying. The second thing is pornography, and unfortunately, a lot of boys get exposed to this at such a young age, and it drastically affects the way their brains view women. It basically teaches them to unwillingly sexualize everything and every woman that they come across, basically just viewing them as objects for sex instead of as actual human beings. Again, I do happen to agree with her. I just don't think it's having as much of an effect as she thinks it does. Because it's not the corn that's driving this. It's how women are acting that's driving this. We all know of a certain website where millions of women are choosing to put themselves, let's say, on display. So to blame it all on the boys and absolve the women when in fact it is them providing the product is a bit disingenuous, don't you think? But again, I do think you have somewhat of a valid point. That said though, it's not a bigger reason why men are avoiding courting women as you think it is. It also makes it harder for them to be in a committed relationship because they're used to seeing different girls every single time they watch this. They lose appreciation for a woman's body and just for her as a human being because they have such easy access to naked women. Um, no. Not even close on that one. And by the way, why would it be any different for women who choose to partake in corn? And oh yes, ladies, you do choose to partake in corn. Oh, you may not watch the videos as much, but I remind you that Fifty Shades of Grey and other similar novels sell by the millions every single year. And it ain't guys buying them. And yes, ladies, they are a form of corn. And they set unrealistic expectations every bit as much as the videos do. They don't need to court women in order to see these things, so they stop courting women in real life too. Or maybe, just maybe, they stopped courting women the way the guys in those romance novels do. So you don't see it when they do court you. Because, well, it's the bare minimum. It's not enough. Your expectations are based on romance novels and rom-com movies, where their men are absolutely perfect and fulfill every woman's desire. It's where the whole sixes mentality comes from. Because those guys in the movies and in those books are all six feet tall millionaires with six pack abs and, well, you know the rest. They're fantasies, not reality. But yet women have set their expectations based on them. While of course saying it's completely misogynistic if men hold women to the same standards that all the actresses in those movies display. Funny how that is. And it's the exact same thing when these guys are viewing girls on social media. And it also impacts the way they view women in real life who are just raw, unedited, real, natural human beings. Because now their brains are so trained into thinking that that's not what attractive women look like. I mean, kind of like how women think every man should look like Ryan Gosling. You know, that actor in The Notebook, that movie you swooned over earlier. How's that any different? But yet in your mind, it is. Again, more generalizations of men while refusing to acknowledge that women are exactly the same way. They think that women are supposed to look like what they see in corn and on social media when all of that is fake. <laughs> it's mind-boggling how they literally cannot see the double standards and hypocrisy of their entire arguments. Women giving it up way too easy. Why would a man court you and try hard to win you over? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did she suddenly just figure it out? Let's see what else she's got to say here. When he can just buy you a drink at the bar and then get in your pants. Just as much as men are not courting women, we are also enabling them. Well, in the end, I got to give credit where credit's due. She did nail one of the big reasons why men aren't courting women. Because it makes far more sense to men to lease a Ferrari and, when you get bored with it, maybe a Lamborghini, than to lock yourself down with the purchase of a minivan. But that's not the real reason. In the end, men would be perfectly happy with a minivan if, and this is the big one, they got something in return. Because that's the real reason why men aren't courting. If you listen to everything she said in that video, up until the very end, she put all the blame on men. She looked for every reason she could except the real one. The fact being that women offer nothing in return in relationships anymore. And the reason she does that is, well, as I always say, taking accountability or taking responsibility to women is akin to kryptonite to Superman. And rather than accept and acknowledge the fact that they offer nothing to men 
other than a certain thing, a thing which is readily available by her own admission, they seek to put the blame on things like rap music and corn. Now, earlier she said that those things are examples of how men don't respect women. In reality, the reverse is true. The ultimate real reason why men are done and walking away, why they're no longer courting women, is that today's modern women do not respect men, not in any way, shape, or form. They see them as things to be used and then discarded. It's why 80% of women file for divorce, and the number one reason they file is they think they can do better or they're bored. Knowing that that's the reality more than half the time, why would you ever expect men to come according? It makes no sense. The logic does not compute. And until that changes, until women start showing some respect for men and acknowledging them and treating them as human beings, not wallets, well, nothing's going to change. Absolutely. This generation of women seems to have a serious disconnect with the concept of accountability in any aspect of their lives. Social media has exposed how women really think about men, and it's no surprise that many men are choosing to walk away. Think about it. How can women tell us to leave them alone and then complain when we do exactly that? It's a classic case of mixed signals. Women used to throw a handkerchief to catch a man's attention. Now, they choose grizzly bears and bad men over good men. They need to start respecting themselves first before they can respect men. Take a look at the influence of media. These rap songs degrading women wouldn't be made if women respected themselves, and would be non-existent if women held themselves in higher regard. Feminism gave women the power, yet many choose to degrade and sell their bodies, then turn around and blame men for not respecting them. Today, men are hesitant to pursue because it's now labeled as stalking unless you're 6 feet 3 inches and good-looking. Women are taught to get whatever they can out of a man and then move on to the next one, treating men like test drives. This delusional reality is a significant reason why men are stepping back. The hashtag MeToo movement has also played a role in this shift. Men are now cautious, unsure of how to act without being labeled a creep or worse. It's easier to sit out than walk on eggshells, constantly fearing accusations. Men don't want to be courted by women if it means being taken to court and losing everything. It's a losing game, and men are opting out. The uncertainty of how to navigate different feminist mindsets only adds to the confusion. Ladies, if you want to change this narrative, start by respecting yourselves and taking accountability for your actions. Understand that men aren't the enemy, but they won't engage in a game that's rigged against them. The choice is yours. Continue down this path or make a change for the better. Hey, I've been getting quite a few messages regarding... Liz, why are you still single? Or why are you single? And I didn't really want to answer this before, but now I do. I thought the answer is not as simple as it sounds. Like you think you can just snap your finger and get into a relationship. Maybe you can, right? But I'm not that young anymore. I don't want to just, you know, just jump into something. It needs to be, it, there's standards, you know? I have standards. I want to spend my time, quality time, and provide it to a loved one, you know, maybe a friend or family. So before jumping into something, I need to really know, is it worth my time? And I'm not saying that some people are not worth my time. I'm just saying that I, it needs to be worth it, you know, it needs to be worthwhile. And I, I do feel like I have so much to offer that I feel like I just can't just jump into something. It has to be somebody that I really believe, you know, that I really like or, you know, potentially love in the future, which even sounds weird to even say out loud because I am not looking for a relationship right now. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, I'm not forcing anything or anyone ever that is not my character um but yeah there are definitely men that are picky and choosy and i find that i am similar to that but i'm not a man i am a woman so there's that but eventually so there's no rush so she's single because she can't lock down that top one percent guy yet she's got standards and we all know what that means 
She's waiting for Mr. Perfect. Good-looking, successful, loving, and lovable. But here's the kicker. She's 25, claiming she's single by choice and doesn't want to rush into anything. Sound familiar? That's what we always hear from women in their early to mid-twenties. They believe they have all the time in the world, not realizing that their biological clock is ticking away and it waits for no one. At this age, many women are living in delusionville with an arrogant attitude that they can always find someone later. But reality hits hard when they start to hit the wall. Suddenly, they want to jump into something serious and start a family. They wish time would freeze as their biological clock ticks louder than ever. Ladies, here's the reality check. Waiting for that perfect guy while dismissing everyone else because they don't meet some sky-high standards is not a winning strategy. Time is unforgiving, and those early 20s don't last forever. You can't hit pause on life and expect things to work out perfectly when you're ready. The blame here falls on women who think they can have it all without putting in the work or making realistic choices. This attitude of being overly choosy and picky while believing that the perfect guy will come along when they're ready is a recipe for long-term singleness. If you want a good man, you need to be realistic and understand that relationships are about more than just ticking boxes on a list. It's about finding someone who compliments you, not someone who fits a fantasy. So, stop waiting for Mr. Perfect and start appreciating the good men around you. The biological clock is ticking, and it's not going to wait for you to figure this out. Here's exactly what I'm going to do to meet a husband in the real world. I cannot rely on the matchmaker or dating apps anymore to meet a husband. After this last update from the matchmaker, I am not really putting any more of those eggs in that basket and I'm just going to let it operate in the background. After my time on the apps here in New York, I really feel like the apps are just making me lose brain cells. I have come up with an action plan to meet men. I know I need to get out and about. I can't wait for someone to walk through my apartment. I have decided. Tuesdays are going to be my night to go and check off a restaurant on my own because I can go by myself. I can sit at the bar. I have already signed up for golf lessons. I really want to be able to go to the driving range and hit golf balls. I think that is the biggest area of opportunity. However, I do not feel comfortable just strolling up to the driving range, picking up a club and I, I wouldn't even know what to do with the club. So I have signed up for golf lessons and those start early September. So a little delay, but that's okay. Next is pickleball. I've been talking about this since the day I moved to New York City. And I found a league to join, but same thing. I do not feel comfortable joining the league until I take some lessons. The league starts in September and I've already started researching lessons. I am gonna have the lessons booked by the end of the week. I am joining a nonprofit board. What a good way to give back. And also, fingers crossed, expand my network and meet people. There is an organization in New York City that will work with you and your skill set and help place you on a nonprofit board. So I've been working with them to figure out what's going to be a good fit for me. I also generally do want to volunteer and I have a lot of interests and skills that I think could benefit a nonprofit. I'm also looking for other New York City activities. Now we all know New York City, there is no shortage of things to do in this city. There are a lot of, how do I say it? Coordinated group dinners. I've been looking at those. There are also things like resort pass. I signed up to go this weekend to a hotel pool. You sign up through resort pass, you reserve a chair, but it's a way to get out there. And I'm going to go do that by myself. I'm happy to do things by myself. My friends are definitely on board with some of these activities. I think they're going to be joining me for pickleball. But I really have been brainstorming. If you have other ideas for me, please put them in the comments. And I just think like, I can't rely on these apps anymore. It, but I'm excited for all the things I have planned. Plus all of these things are gonna keep me active. So here's the thing. What is she doing to improve herself? Has she ever considered self-reflection? Therapy? Has she taken any accountability for her past failures? Or is she still blaming men every single time? The reality is that good men, and men in general, aren't interested in Western women anymore when it comes to anything serious. Why? Because they believe that Western women aren't worth the time and effort. There's a growing sentiment that Western women are too wrapped up in their own narratives, avoiding any form of self-improvement or accountability. Instead of always pointing the finger at men, she needs to take a serious look in the mirror. What's she doing to work on herself? Has she considered that maybe, just maybe, 
the common denominator in her failed relationships is her. Self-reflection and therapy aren't signs of weakness. They're steps towards growth and understanding. If she continues on this path of blame and denial, she's going to keep struggling. Accountability is crucial. It's about recognizing where you've gone wrong and taking steps to make things right. It's about understanding that not all men are the problem. Sometimes, the issue lies within. Good men are tired of the blame game. They want partners who are willing to grow, willing to admit when they're wrong, and willing to work on themselves. Until she realizes this and takes a good, hard look at her actions and attitudes, she'll continue to face the same problems. Ladies, it's time to wake up. Self-improvement is key. Stop blaming others for your failures and start taking responsibility. Only then can you truly move forward and find the happiness and partnership you're looking for. Stop giving ugly guys a chance. Stop it. Beautiful women giving ugly men a chance legitimizes them to other beautiful women. We have seen this time and time again. We've seen this with Pete Davidson. We see this with Clinton Kane. The minute you give an ugly guy a chance, it doesn't make, you're not any safer with the ugly guy. You're just going to get burned by an ugly guy and then you're going to legitimize him to other hot girls. Hot women are a social currency. I will say this until I'm blue in the face and you guys will never fucking listen to me. But if you are a beautiful woman, if you pour a lot into being beautiful, you need to treat that fucking seriously. That is commodified. That's commodified more than anything in this fucking world is commodified. Beautiful women are more commodified than anything that happens in this world. That the only thing that gives any, the only thing gives businesses legitimacy is whether or not beautiful women are involved. Ugly men have figured out a way to do the dance and check all the boxes that they think you want them to check. And it doesn't make them any, it doesn't make them sincere. It means they're an ugly guy who figured it out. And he knows the minute he bags one baddie, the rest will just come rolling in. The odds that you get burned by an ugly guy versus a hot guy are so much higher because they have a chip on their shoulder. They have something to prove. And you dating him just opens up the floodgates for him to date other hot women. You are not safe. It is even more dangerous for you if you date an ugly guy. If you're like, oh, well, look at him. He's ugly. I didn't think I had to worry. No, you have to worry more than you've ever had to worry, bitch. An ugly broke guy too. If you're gonna date an uggo, Make sure he's paying some bills because Lord knows you're paying bills. I don't know a single hot girl who doesn't spend hundreds of dollars on being hot. Don't fucking lie. Some of us spend more than others, but girl, it's expensive. I just spent $150 on my nails and my toes. Last time I had a hair appointment, it was $600 fucking dollars. I just book a facial and a body scrub tonight. That's going to be another $300. Baby, that's not, that's not Monopoly money. That's not play around money. That's not haha -ha fun time money. That's fucking money. Everything I just said in the last month of beauty expenses is over a thousand dollars. And you're going to let some uggo use you as a token to, to open up the floodgates for other beautiful women. That's what you're doing. He needs to be paying significant amount of bills. He needs to be spoiling you if he is ugly. I'm not saying that's not going to make him not other, pursue other beautiful women and that you're not also going to be used as a token to open the floodgates for other beautiful women. But if you're dating an uggo and you're doing it for free, <laughs> you don't know how this works. It's okay. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying. If you're going to date someone just for a love, haha, -ha, fun time dating, get as hot of a guy as you can. Get someone that you find hot, which is already difficult because I, also as women, a guy that we think is cute, we'll show our friends and they'll be like, okay. Women are more universally hot. Guys are more like, if you're into that kind of thing, kind of hot. You know what I mean? They have subgenres. The only guys that are going to be the most likely to not dog you out are guys that are busy, working, and are mid. Those are the guys who are going to be the most loyal to you. Ones that are like, they're not cute, but they're not, they're not hot, but they're not ugly. They got stuff going on. They got a job. You know, they cover some things. Those are the guys that you are safest with. The most dangerous guys are the uggos. The second most dangerous are the hot ones. Stay in that mid-range. That's where you're going to be happy, girlfriend. All right, let's talk about this. You've heard the saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Looks fade but personality and perspective are what truly count. This is the crux of the matter. We don't have time to check all those boxes just to get in the door. We want someone who wants us for who we are, not for some idealized version they've conjured up in their heads. Here's the thing. Women often project their own limitations and insecurities onto men. It's like a game of monopoly. They think they're a trophy to be won, a goddess deserving of worship. But let's be real, they're barely close to it. 
This delusion of grandeur leads to a cycle of disappointment and frustration, both for them and for the men they encounter. Women who believe their trophies to be won are often the worst lovers. They're so wrapped up in their own self-image and perceived value that they forget to actually invest in the relationship. They expect to be worshipped and adored without putting in the effort to earn that adoration. This mindset only leads to grief and dissatisfaction. Let's put the blame where it belongs, solely on these women. Instead of constantly projecting their insecurities onto men and setting unrealistic expectations, they need to take a step back and reflect on their own actions and attitudes. It's not about being a trophy. It's about being a partner. It's about mutual respect, understanding, and growth. Men want someone who is genuine, someone who sees them for who they are and values them for it. We don't have time for games or unrealistic standards. We want real connections built on mutual appreciation and effort. Ladies, it's time to drop the trophy mentality. Focus on being a partner, not a prize. Work on yourself, your personality, and your perspective. Recognize that relationships are a two-way street, requiring effort from both sides. Stop projecting your insecurities onto men and start building genuine connections. In the end, it's about finding someone who loves you for you, not for some idealized version of you. So, let's ditch the unrealistic expectations and focus on what truly matters. Personality, perspective, and genuine connection.